Good morning everybody, happy Friday. How are we doing? Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, we were a little bit early this morning, so uh, again, mm -hmm. just taking two or three minutes just to get ourselves ready. Um, get some creative energy in there. Just put my list up. Um, and be ready for a nice gallery day. Uh, we are still being creative. We are still uh, creating a little bit. So I'll be adding to my canvases uh, from Tuesday. So that was our color and our lettering day. Um, so I wanna finish those off before they go into the gallery. So please, if you are watching, please have a look around your house and see if you've got any space for a gallery wall. I've basically just got a, a wall in my studio it's got a couple of shelves on it, um, but that's where I'm gonna. I'll turn the camera around, and we'll have a look at the gallery. All right, we'll start in the studio today. So I'm gonna paint again, leave them to dry, do a couple, do a little bit more uh, work on them, and then they'll go into the gallery once they're ready. I'll also go through uh, the idea of framing today. So again, I know I do this every week, um, but every piece that we create in the paint repeat sessions, I'll show you what it's like rough, like these. And then when it looks like framed, it can really uh, step up um, your confidence levels. It can really help with kind of uh, seeing your work as an actual piece of work. Uh, and also gives it, a, you see it in situ. So in the situation that you're expecting it to be in. Um, which is a framed bit of work, hopefully. Um, so I'm just going to just get all this sort of stuff sorted. Good morning, good morning. There we go. Okay, lovely stuff. So welcome back. Welcome to the studio. Uh, again, if you were watching yesterday, uh, my phone overheated. Um, I have no idea how. I think I was overcharging it. Um, don't know even how that happens. Uh, so apologies if you were locked in yesterday. Uh, about 42 minutes in, uh, my camera decided to stop working. Uh, so yesterday's session is in two parts. There's a part one and a part two. If you were wanting to see what we did with our Grim Carey. Yesterday was portraits, so we drew Jim Carey. Thank you to the audience member who shouted Jim Carey for the suggestions. Uh, and we drew him. It was a little bit more nightmarish, so we gave him a different name. He's called Grim Carey. You'll see him in the, uh, in the gallery very soon. Um, so again, today, I'll talk through what I want to do to my canvas. Um, so again, these were created this week. I think he's maybe um, a rollover from last week. Who knows? Uh, create so much work. I just don't know what to do. Uh, so I want to paint um, the background black a little bit so it grounds the piece in. I think this guy looks a little bit like the Hitcher. He is a character, he's a, an evil hitchhiker on the Mighty Boosh, shout out to Noel Fielding. Um, so I want to kind of stick with that theme. So I'm going to put a bit of black around it to give the skull a bit more uh, strength. And then we're going to put a little bronze line and then maybe a black or a white line over it. Similar to this. So we've got Stay Creative. Uh, again, I'm going to go around it in uh, bronze. Maybe flick a little bit of gold ink at it just so it's got a bit of speck. Let it dry and then frame it and you'll see what this looks like. So you'll see it from flat, the doodle, the colour, the lettering, final layers and then framing as well. So the full journey of a canvas. In exactly the same way, I want to show you this guy as well. So this guy, I, th I just keep going back to red punk and so I painted the background red. Um, Mrs Barton, one of the amazing audience members for the paint with Pete, suggested a teal uh, blue. This was in the mix of the teal green before we actually put some blue in it. Um, so I decided to add it to the red. And again, layering up, always, I love it. I absolutely, I think it looks really good. Um, just seeing the brush strokes and then just anything human, um, the pen lines and all that sort of stuff as well. So we'll have another minute. Just one more minute. I am repping Most Wanted. Uh, you'll find out a bit more about these lovely items very soon, cheers. Please make sure you've got some water um, and a bit of fruit near you. We have brew time halfway through, so in about half an hour we'll get the kettle on. If you need five minutes, please take it. Again, it's gallery day, so it's a lot more relaxed um, than our normal kind of sessions. Uh, but I want to get started, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of bronze uh, to my pieces. No, first, sorry, first things first, black paint. So I'm going to get my paintbrush. Where are we? There it is. Just drying on my trousers. I've got my paint joggers on again, so uh, just in case we were going to paint in the gallery day, which we are. So I'm going to be very careful of my hoodie, but uh, my, my trousers, my joggers, are just covered in paint already. So again, I've got my fat brush. 
my standard 12 gauge from uh, Cass. All I'm going to do is fill in the black around the areas to give them a little bit more of a sinister edge. All right, so I'm going to do that fairly fluidly, um, quite accurately as well, because I know I'm going to put another line around it so I can kind of go up to the border of the skull and, and freestyle it a little bit. Okay, so again, I've got my perma black, a little jar of black ink, uh, paint straight in. I don't want to be too heavy on it, I want it a little bit brushy. I'm going to come this side, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is like basically just kind of sketch using a little bit of a wet brush with a paint just so it goes a little bit further and is a little bit thinner. But I kind of wanted just a, a bit of a suggestion that it's a bit darker than this amazing kind of a Kelly or Irish green, almost British racing green in some of the blends. So again, just being fluid and just bringing that border in over my masking tape, we'll reveal it later. So again, I'm just sketching with my paintbrush. Again, using your art tools like other art tools is really good. So we were using, I was using my pens like a pencil the other day for uh, templates or baselines. Uh, and again, if you kind of get a lot more kind of fluid with your paintbrush, things like uh, pen use and pencil use become a lot easier because you're getting used to that communication between your head and your hand. So just put a little, I'm just going to give him one black eye, leave him like that, and I think that's about done. Cool, maybe just a couple more there. And the itcher. And I put him in the picture. If anyone else wants to finish the lyrics, please do. <laughs> If you don't know the Mighty Boosh, uh, if you were ever into um, Monty Python, uh, it's a very, very modern version, very surrealist comedy, very surrealist kind of theatre production in a TV show. Absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the, genuinely one of the places that I uh, heard the word obsolete a lot. So I was thinking about calling myself Pete Obsolete yeah, many moons ago, um, and I watched the Mighty Boosh and they used it quite a lot um, because they were kind of an old school uh, mentality towards art and set design but also a modern approach to that kind of, uh, it's a TV show dealing with modern things, there's technology involved and all that sort of stuff. So that kind of balance was there. Um, just watch the Mighty Boosh, you will have a ball, honestly. Uh, okay, next is gonna be the bronze. So I'm gonna get my big fat uh, Pebio marker on these. These are metal pen, well sorry, these are uh, permanent pens, so permanent ink. Uh, try not to get it on your clothing or walls, I'm gonna try. Um, but yeah, these are great and this is a really nice bronze. So all I'm going to do is go over this line again, give it another layer of bronze and we'll move on. So let's do eyes. Again, just a little bit of rough. Just so it's got another bit of depth in him. Alright. I don't want the pen perfect. I don't want it really gloopy. I want it a little bit torn, a little bit worn, and a little bit rough. Just to break these strong black lines up. Okay. And gives us another something to play with in the artwork. So, there we are. shake him a little bit. For the next one, I want him pretty strong, all right? So, uh, in fact, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go white over this, I've changed my mind. I was gonna do uh, bronze around the letters. We can do that as well, let's do that as well. Forgive the uh, mind changing. Move him up there. Sorry. So he can just go down there for a minute, not long. So I'm going to add a bit of bronze. I'm going to just uh, highlight those letters one more. Um, I'm tempted to do it in white. Mm -hmm. I think white is going to look a little bit better. I'm going to put my bronze down. 
the beauty of art is that you can freestyle at will. Um, so if you change your mind at the last second, that's absolutely fine. It's part of that process. Um, so, I just want those letters really, uh, really strong, um, really quite uh, defined. So I'm just going to get my white marker. Here he is, my white Oscar. And I'm just going to go round all the letters. Just get them working. Just so he stands out a bit. Again, I'm still, I know there's going to be another layer of gold in there. I am just want to do like a little flick, like a kind of brush of uh, gold. So I'm just going to go round these letters quite roughly. Just so we have got a bit more definition in the letters. Following my lines from Wednesday, from our lettering day. A little bit ghostly, these lines. Only because the uh, dark ring underneath is coming through, that's fine. There we go. Uh, apologies if you can hear my fan. <laughs> I don't want my phone overheating again, so I'm just uh, cooling the room down. What are we doing? Let's get some tunes on. Let's get around these hearts. This is the last of this pen. A little bit faded, that's okay. Pens in the bin. Okay, uh, so the next thing I kind of want to do is add a bit of gold. Because we weren't using ink or paint, but uh, that ink in the pen is going to dry really quick. Um, so I'm going to use some uh, Montana liquid gold. Beautiful stuff. This has a, a, a lovely tendency to drip everywhere, okay. I've made sure that my, my uh, ground is covered. I've got a bit of uh, carpet on top of some carpet and some plastic as well, just to make sure. So again, this stuff is pretty noxious. I've got a window open and a fan on um, because you shouldn't be uh, breathing this in that much. I'm probably going to cover my nose a little bit when I'm doing it because when you take the top off, it smells and it's really, really bad for your lungs. So I'm going in. Uh, I'm just going to put a frame around him in gold and then I'm going to try and flick a little bit of paint across it equally. I'm going to use a little short brush. So one that I can flick like this. Do we need to do anything else with this brush? I'm going to outline Hitcher really quick. Just before, because he will become our dead brush. He will become Mr. Dead after he's gone into the gold. That gold will dry solid, um, unless you've got paraffin or mess, uh, methylated spirits, to then clean your brush. I don't. I'm intending to uh, find a new Mr. Dead brush, right? So my new brush will be Mr. Dead brush very soon. Again, my forever stack of uh, white paint in a jam jar. So what I'm going to do is just go round the hitcher one more time just to get that white line absolutely uh, perfect and clear. There we go. Again with this brush it kind of tears through the ink of the paint. Uh, which is kind of what I want, actually. So let's get this polo.
didn't have a nose, so we just put the nose in. There we go. Okay, little little hair. Just bit by bit. Just add into our pieces. Okay. Cool. I wonder. I'm considering uh, going around all the letters in actual white paint. I think the uh, the brush stroke is a little bit too thick for that, so we'll leave that. That's fine. Give me a little wash. In fact, I'm gonna add one more tooth on here. Get these bang on. There we go. It's a bit better. Okay, cool. Another little rinse. Okay, we have our clean brush ready to go into the gold. So again, the hitch is nearly there. I just want to do one black line over our hitcher. He's basically got a massive thumb. Uh, he's a really, he's like the top hitchhiker. So he's got a massive thumb for hitchhiking. And he's green. He's got a big like polo, uh, like a big circular like monocle, big white monocle. He's got a top hat with polos going around it. Um, his friends, are <laughs> this is where the reference for the skeleton comes in as well. Um, his mates are called the Piper Twins. So again, I'm bringing in quite a few different references from just a character. Uh, that I like in TV and film. You can do exactly the same. Um, it can be from your imagination. You can imagine someone from Corrie or EastEnders and you can draw them um, really abstractly or really strangely and it'll give them a whole different personality. Again, like with Grim Carey, we'll see him very soon. Uh, we can give them a, a slightly alternate name. Um, so if you feel like your drawing isn't exactly um, a replication or like a, a, a good enough version of that face, I'm sure it is, um, but if you think that it's not, give them a little different name, make a little pun, like Grim, Jim, Jim Carey, Grim Carey, uh, and it will change that, or give it a whole new personality. All right, so I'm gonna try and do some spatter, uh, and I'm gonna try and not get it on myself, that'll be fun, won't it? Um, so, let's do some spattering. So I'm just gonna dip lightly into my gold paint. I'm just gonna see how runny it is. Dead runny. I need some more ink on there, I think. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm basically just running my finger through the brush. Again, holding my breath, not having it near my mouth or nose, preferably. And we're just going to spatter. That's better. Uh, the whole piece in gold. Again, it's going everywhere. I've planned for that. Even the walls. That's fine. So I just want a kind of nice snowstorm almost of gold. There we go. There's some. Just watching my hoodie. <laughs> I'm praying it's not. There we go. I'm going to show you guys in a minute. I'll move it closer to the camera and we'll say our good mornings in a minute as well. Uh, last couple of knob, uh, lumps of paint. Last one, my paintbrush is literally covered in gold now, so is my hands. That's what I like. Uh, 
Okay, brush goes straight in the water. Hand covered in gold, like C3PO. There we go, super sticky, that's all right. Again, normally wear gloves, I'd certainly recommend wearing gloves um, if you are going to be doing this sort of stuff. That's my gold done. I'm not gonna put any more gold in there, am I? Maybe I am, maybe I am, yeah I am. So, there we are. I just wanted a little spatter so we can work into that. Onto the gold, there we are. I think I've got some on my sleeve, that doesn't matter. Right, okay, so we've got a bronze line, I think we can squeeze in a little gold line as well. Just dry this guy off. Just while we're covered in gold, we may as well. So, we've done that. Okay, cool, just, I'm going to just basically draw in over that bronze, just to give it a bit more of a metallic. Now you can, obviously you can see it dripping straight away as well. I can't grab that, okay. Okay. Gonna have a little breather, get the lid back on that. So he's sealed. Ooh, it does really smell. Be careful if you are using stuff like that. If you do want assistance, just ask somebody as well. So he's on there. Okie dokie. So we've got one more line, a black line on Hitcher, a black line on our skull. And we've got something something else. I want to do something else with that uh, Stay Creative piece. Um, I'm just checking you can see it as well. Okay, cool. Um, let's take us some, some good mornings. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, Miss Victoria Choi, Mrs. Barton, Mr. Ed Hampson. Good morning. How are we doing? Hope everyone's doing all right. Oh, Fred the Red. Um, okay, done. Thank you. Uh, I always ask our audience, uh, the Paint Repeat audience, to name the pieces. If you have an idea, or like if a name crops up while we're painting, uh, you can call him whatever you want. I will name him that piece. This is Fred the Red. All right, it's a little bit more gold, uh, but Fred the Red is now christened. I'm going to give this guy his, I'm going to christen him as the Hitcher. Uh, it's just gone 20 past 10, um, so I'm just going to let these dry for about another, maybe a minute or two minutes, um, do the final lines, we'll have brew time, and then we'll flip the camera around and we'll have a look at the gallery and go through what we've done this week with a cup of tea, if you've got time, if you want to go and get one. I'm happy with my water. Um, in fact, while we're drying, let's do that. Okay. So as you may have noticed, I'm wearing a certain type of hoodie today, and I'm drinking from a certain type of water bottle. Um, again, please keep drawing if you're drawing. I'm just uh, just wanting to promote the amazing collab between myself and Most Wanted Wines. So Most Wanted are an incredible wine company based in Gloucestershire. Um, I've done some paint with Pete's with them before, so we created the wine bottles and we customised them and painted them. That's just a wine bottle covered in white paint and then drawn on. That spray painted black and then drawn on that session uh, with Most Wanted uh, was amazing. We also then uh, did a taste based piece. I drank, uh, had a couple of drinks of their new Prosecco and we drew a painted a piece, excuse me, based on the tastes. So, like bubbles, sparkly, 
little bit gold, a little bit white and black in there as well. Um, but for our, well, yesterday I got all I got my kit yesterday. Uh, there was a competition to win uh, some merch from Most Wanted and Obsolete. Okay, so we've got a water bottle. I mean, I'm done. So what? I've been told you could fit uh, nearly a bottle of wine in there as well, just for the record. So these are thermals, um, so put hot water in them, it will stay hot, so coffee all day. Or obviously water as well, there's the most wanted, with the obsolete custom font. The hoodies as well, this one's just for me, so you can get sweats online, please have a look at most wanted wines. And we have a backpack as well, these are amazing. Um, so they've got like front pocket, and they've got a Mac and an iPad pocket, it's padded. It's also got a USB charger in it as well. So these is just some of the merch um, that you could buy if you wanted to online. So Most Wanted Wines on everything, Instagram, Facebook, uh, mostwantedwines.com. But they also have a competition. You can win this, okay? You can win a hoodie, uh, the sweatshirt and a bag uh, and some a water bottle and some other bits of merch. Please follow Most Wanted Wines on Instagram. All of the details on the Most Wanted uh, Instagram and their website and um, so if you want to enter yourself into a competition I think it's just a uh, follow most wanted tag a friend very simple um, again you can win the backpack uh, sweatshirt a water bottle there's something else coming out as well very soon um, I will be announcing the next paint with Pete and most wanted collab um, well probably next week to be completely honest um, I'll give you a shout okay so now we've got about five minutes five minutes Five and a half minutes left uh, before brew time. I just want to use that time. I think my ink and my paint should be dry. So I might just go over that again in the white just to give it an actual definite uh, finish. Um, and I'm going to do a black line over our hitch your face. All right, there we are. Let's do that. Okay, we'll do that. Touch test. Still a bit wet here. That's all right. Uh, okay, we're gonna. Uh, let's have a look. There's one eye. There we go. Okay, there's two eyes. I'm just going to leave that for a minute just for that rest of the paint to dry. So we're going to move on. Lovely. If you see me lean back and squint and look a bit weird on cam, uh, apologies. It's just I'm just checking depth and checking uh, spatial uh, awareness of it and all that sort of stuff. Again, is there last bit on this guy? I think. 
Lovely. Okay, cool. Okay, so one minute, two minutes for him, and we'll do the reveal just before brew time. Uh, I want to show you what it's like when it looks rougher on your kind of working wall, on your studio wall, uh, and what it looks like actually in a frame, um, and the difference between that and how simply by framing it you can make it look really, really different. Um, we have got one more minute before brew time. He should be done by then. Just, just going to peel, pull some of the paint off this so it dries quicker. I want to see it. Okay. Julio. Okay, I'm just going to go around my stay creative again. Just to, again, fatten that white up, give it a bit more um, strength in the words. Pens that work are the best, eh? Um, hold on a sec. Officially brew time, halfway through the show. We have five minutes uh, to tidy up, get yourself a, a brew, get some fresh air if you need, some fruit. Uh, I'm just gonna finish this piece by that time, by the end of brew time, five minutes. Flip the camera around and we'll go into the gallery. All right, nearly finished him as well, lovely. A lot stronger in the lettering now. Cool. Oops. Okay, last bit of this. And just the hearts. There we are, stay creative. Yeah, looks a lot better on the on screen. I can see it um, a lot more clearer. Okay, so again, just finishing up Mr. Hitcher. Last couple of lines for this guy.
And his little hair. Okay, cool. And 30 seconds almost to the button before the end of brew time. So, um, I'm going to reveal these and then I'm going to so basically just peel them off. In fact, I'm going to flip the camera around. We'll do that over there. I've got another table set up. Two seconds, please bear with me. I'll be back. Mr. Hitcher, looking lovely. There we are. And over there. Okay, I'm just going to switch you guys around. Okay, hello. So, we are now in the gallery. Just two walls in my studio. One I've allocated for painting, one for display. All I'm gonna do now, you can go there. Excuse me. Ah, oh, thank you, Mrs. Barton. Uh, please have a look. Um, they're one of my favorite brands ever. So, I'm basically just gonna peel the masking tape off our pieces now so we can display them. Um, you might not be able to see this 100%, uh, please bear with me, I won't be long at all. There's a top line. And the bottom line, and just the long edges to go. Mm. One of my favourite things is, uh, is taking the, the masking tape off because you get to see that clean line. I'll show you in a second. And the hitcher. So again, those clean lines, really step it up. We can go there for a minute. In fact, we can put him up so we can go in our gallery now. Put some blue tack on him. It's the hitcher. We'll do our stay safe, stay creative, or sorry, stay creative piece. Again, all those little flecks of gold I like. So, again, all I'm doing is peeling very, very gently away from the paint. Alright, so I'm peeling. Pulling it away from the piece. I've just got to do it flat to get sure it doesn't tear anything. There's that straight edge again that I was talking about. There we go. Gently does it on the masking tape, everybody. And then we have the stay creative piece. I'm going to sign these now. Uh, they'll be up on the website if anybody does want to uh, buy them. There we are. So I've signed it, one of one, the only one I'll ever do like that. I've dated it as well. There's our state creative piece. So I'm going to sign Hitcher.
signed and dated and named. There we are. And last but by certainly no means least for the reveal is Fred the Red. Fred the Red Punk. I love it when people give names to my art. I absolutely love it. Okay, so with this one, we did a bit of a double frame. Um, we painted the whole thing. I then put masking tape over our black and white layer. You'll see that in a sec. So again, we painted the background black and red, I think it was. And then we masked it up and then went in with all the layers as well. So you've got this kind of black border as well. You can go up and just sign them. Fred the red. Sign dated number, there we are. Or sign dated and named, should I say. There we are. There we have it, there's, there's the artwork. And the other work that we did this week, I'll do the framing in a minute. So thank you so much. Uh, the gallery day's been a little bit different today, I've done a bit more painting. I wanted to spend a bit of time just finishing up the pieces so everybody and myself could see them in the gallery. But this week we've done loads of stuff. Um, I've run out of A3, so forgive <laughs> the, uh, the size. Uh, so on Monday, it was Burns night, we chose to draw some uh, vegetables, some fruit and veg. We then decided to draw some eyes and create uh, vegetables into characters, much like Pickle Rick. So we had a tough man turnip and Pete the potato. There we are, enjoying their Scottish festivities. On Wednesday, we did lettering. So part of it was uh, the stay creative in the bubble farm. We practiced the bubble. We also worked out how to fatten up our own handwriting and then how to create it into kind of, uh, you know, an outline as well. Very simple, went down the tracing route. Uh, this was also yesterday, uh, sorry, Wednesdays. So uh, again, turning our street font into a bubble to make a big NHS banner. You can cut that out and stick it on your window if you wanted. There we are, that was Wednesday. And then yesterday, uh, we drew a portrait. So. Uh, I tried to put two pictures together, uh, both of Jim Carrey, thank you, uh, please shout out, if, you, if it was you who uh, gave Jim Carrey the shout, perfect, perfect suggestion. Uh, the guy, the man of a thousand faces, uh, he's played the mask, you know, uh, he's done absolutely loads and loads of different stuff, uh, Ace Ventura obviously, um, Eternal Sunshine, etc. Meet Grim Carrey, alright, I wasn't overly happy with the accuracy of this face. I think you can tell it's Jim Carrey from the Ace Quiff and his kind of weird eyes and all that and his, uh, he's got really kind of uh, defined um, cheeks as well. I wasn't amazingly, I wasn't overblown or, uh, sorry, I wasn't blown away by uh, the accuracy of the drawing so I decided to give him a bit of a nightmare name. Um, so it takes it away from being this is what I think Jim Carrey looks like or I can draw Jim Carrey. It becomes a character for us, for ourselves. And again, it doesn't matter if it looks like him or not, does it? There we are, Mr. Grim Carey. We also did uh, our Pirate Pete as well. Uh, Pirate Pete is here. So before the Jim Carey, we kind of went through our basic structure of a face. This pirate started out as an egg, with all the breakdowns and the kind of uh, how to draw a face or the basic structure of the face. Um, so we just playing around a little bit, added a parrot, thanks for the suggestion, um, just to make sure that he's definitely a parrot and he's got some company. Okie dokie, about 20, well just over, just under 20 minutes left. We've done our gallery. I've shown you through, excuse me, I've told you through the work we've done this week. I sincerely hope you're blue tacking or masking taping your work up as well so you can sit back, have a cup of tea, it's Friday. Day to a nice relaxing day um, if you are on furlough or everything else. Um, so you can put these up, take five minutes, make a cup of tea, sit down, pat yourself in the back and just say, I've done something creative this week. It's all about just doing, I think, at the moment. Um, the first lockdown uh, was kind of fun and a bit more enjoyable because it was new. I think by third lockdown, I'm doing it as well. I'm getting a little bit kind of uh, cabin fevery a little bit. 
So just by picking a pen up in the morning and just get, doing something uh, means you can tick that off and you can go about your day knowing that you've actually done something as well. Also, I, I've, I've probably said it every week, every session is a bank of ideas, a bank of knowledge, and a bank of trial and experimentation, all right? So if you like one of the techniques that you've done this week, maybe try it over the weekend, who knows? Do another version of it, draw uh, a, a better Jim Carrey, draw another nightmare face, draw yourself, draw some lettering, draw anything, all right? Uh, it doesn't stop um, at the weekend. Um, you know, I'm out taking photos and drawing every day as much as I can, just to make sure this and these stay nice and busy, all right? It's also good having a bit of exercise as well. Um, get your breathing going, get your lungs going, and all that sort of stuff. Lovely, okay, framing. So, uh, I did say this last week. Uh, I wanna show you what the difference is between a flat piece and a framed piece. Excuse me. Okay, cool. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Who else is here? Hello, hello. Ah, good morning, Nias. How are we doing, Missy? How are you doing? Uh, okay, so we have got a little bit of crease in that. That's all right. Just push them out a little bit. So we'll do a little one first. I'll do my A3. So we'll do Fred the Red. Um, you know, you can find frames. They could be extortionate prices. Uh, please have a look on Amazon if you're interested in getting some simple and very uh, cheap but very good frames. I always try and get white. It makes all the colour in your work really pop out. You'll see that. That's not the piece. I haven't used invisible ink. Um, I'm going to put this down and we're going to get Fred the Red in a frame. So just open the frame. Try not to injure myself or bleed over the, uh, the canvas. Um, I basically put my finger through one of the, one of the supports uh, last week. Not, not great. Okay, so flat. He's so shiny. So again, I don't know if you can see that in the, uh, in the light, whether the gold's kicking in a little bit with the light. Oh, yeah. Just take the blue tuck off. So again, flat. Not, uh, not purposeless, um, but hasn't really got a kind of context um, as soon as I put it in the frame. However, make sure it's dry, obviously. Nice and gentle. And your work steps up, all right? You're giving it a context, you've given it a border, uh, you've given it a palette of color to go off. So we're using white frame because I've used white in the piece. Um, the gold, hopefully, you can still see it glinting a little bit. So when the light catches this specific gold, super metallic, I'll try and get it, I don't know. There's one of our pieces, nice and framed. Just move there, uh, stay creative for a minute, he can go on there. There we are. Uh, much like the piece that was created last week in the Paint With Peter sessions. So this was last week's. Uh, this is this week's. So we can put them together. You'd have a whole range of uh, different schools if you were copying me. If not, please draw whatever you want. You can sit there for a minute. Lovely. And for the bigger ones again, there's two. So I want to show you both, please. Uh, because one's got that speckled gold. Uh, and the other one's got the uh, the white frame and they're kind of a bit more darker, a little bit more kind of obsolete skull going for Mr. Hitcher, okay? So again, nice big A2 frame. Just put them on my table. I might even frame Grim. Let's, I'm going to frame Grim as well. I want to show you what it looks like. I'm, again, I'm not happy with this drawing. Let's see what it looks like framed and uh, see if that changes my mind. Okay, so Grim's going straight in. Got the board on, the back board in. Framing can be a bit tricky, worth taking your time over it and not injuring yourself. <laughs> Always helps. So again, even in the frame, I'm more happy with him. Um, gives him a context, gives him a border, uh, gives him a, again a purpose, like we've created him for a piece of art. He wouldn't be the first thing I framed out of the work that I've got. 
Um, but still, even just seeing it in the frame, I think really kind of uh, steps him up a lot. Right. Let's have a look at the actual artwork. That was an example of just kind of uh, a piece that I might not be happy with 100% or I didn't think I was happy with but then by seeing it in a frame it confirms or uh, you know denies that idea so I really like it when it's in the frame straight away. We do go stay creative in the frame. Nice and neat, nice and dry. Again, oh, that gold has really stepped it up a lot. Um, there's, a, there's a stay creative piece framed. Uh, hopefully, again, you can see those, those little gold uh, like glints that make it really kind of pop a lot. Again, if you like the work, please give me a shout. I'm just trying to see if, uh, if you can actually see the gold in it. There we are. I'll move it closer. So hopefully you can see the gold spatters in there. But the main thing, again, is just the fact that the, the frame because we've masking tape the frame off and dictated our own frame, the frame actually adds to that as well. So it kind of extends the white piece, pushes the attention into the actual artwork itself. And again, pr protects your artwork. The best thing about, the other thing about framing is obviously it will keep it very, very flat, very, very neat for a long, long, long time. Uh, it can be really difficult to find places in your house, under your bed, you know, uh, under a mat or something to keep it flat. A couple of frames, you know, I think these were about maybe 20 quid a frame. Um, it's worth it if you've got a piece that you really, really like. Okay, let's stay creative. I just want to see what Mr. Hitcher looks like. And then, we'll have a little look through the gallery again. And then we'll say, happy weekend. Uh, two seconds. Again, a little bit rough around the edges, um, but I absolutely love the, the, the gold and the white, and again, that balance of the layering. I didn't wait too long, I just went straight in with the gold and over with the white. So not being precious um, can really help uh, with the enjoyment of work and the enjoyment of actually making art, but also you can see the fun in those lines. If it's really straight and very uh, uniform, straight line, it can look a little bit boring if you get a bit more, if you put fun into it, it'll look fun. There we go. Okay. And last, but by certainly no means least, is our hitcher. So there's our hitcher. Again, putting that black around the edge uh, really worked. I wanted to push the green into the face, so it was only the face that had the green in. Um, and again, that kind of flat line border that we've dictated. There's a bit of extra in there, it's fine. Um, it kind of adds to that thing. We can then sign it, so I've signed the bottom, and I've gone over that line. Gives yourself a little bit of space to sign it and name it, maybe date it, if you're into that. Um, but there is our hitcher piece. Can set the radiator. Et voilà. Okie dokie, ladies and gents. So we've got about five minutes left. Thank you so much uh, for staying locked in with the Paint Repeat this week. Uh, again, you know, I'll do my little spiel in a minute. Um, but if you want to look at some of the stuff online or other Paint Repeats that we've done, from last year, from the first or second lockdown, some of the specials. We drew a V for Vendetta face um, in, for the bonfire night. We created some weird Halloween characters out of pumpkins for the Halloween special. Um, I'm so, I'm genuinely gutted I didn't uh, do a Christmas uh, edition or episode of the Paint With Peace, uh, mainly from some severe technical issues that have hopefully been sorted out now. Uh, not the phone overheating, that needs to get sorted. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, if you want to, something to do over the weekend, please have a look at the past paint repeats. Um, we do focus quite a lot on the kind of face and lettering and, and colour and painting and freestyling. Um, but I think again, that's a really, really strong 
uh, foundation for anybody who's wanting to get into art, anyone who feels awkward about their art that they're doing, or just wants to try something, you know? Um, you've got to be okay with making those mistakes. Uh, simply from making those mistakes, things will come out of it. I've always said this, art is a journey. It's something you will always move forward. Even if you think you've done something wrong or bad or, um, you know, like, oh, it's a mistake or it's not drawn very well, whatever. Um, simply by having that in your journey, that's part of that journey. It's very important. Um, I just know that it's very difficult, certainly in the current climate, um, to feel enthusiastic about anything or to kind of uh, want to bank an idea or hope that something's going to, uh, you know, that, say, you know, uh, Corona or COVID is going to end by April, for example. We don't know that. So it's really difficult to kind of trust yourself and be like, this is when it's, you know, close you on the idea of when it's going to finish or what can I do until then. Um, please, please, please get that mindset of uh, just drawing and just creating whatever day, whatever's happening outside, whatever's happening inside, whatever's happening in the news, uh, that we're just always drawing. Uh, again, the, the cult of celebrity. Um, obviously come out in the past 10 years, certainly with the uh, internet of Facebook and Instagram and all that, um, there is so much uh, fodder, so many uh, ideas and people to draw in the world, you can literally open a book and just try and draw someone. We tried yesterday, and this is what we came up with, um, Grim Carey, again not very accurate Jim Carey, it doesn't matter, we're going to practice our portraits every single week. Um, this took about 20 minutes. Normally I take a good like couple of hours, if not a day or two, on uh, some portraits. Um, but I'm very, very excited and, and keen uh, to attempt these little challenges. Um, just so you can see that it's being done. Uh, and if you are drawing with me as well and partaking in those little challenges and you're setting yourself little art goals, 10 billion points this time. Forget millions, 10 billion points. Someone's got a score somewhere, I'm sure. Okay. So yeah, there we are, there's Mr. Hitcher. Let's get some more light on right. Uh, Stay Creative, Fred the Red, Grim Carey, Pirate Pete. This is all this week, I'm just naming characters we've come up with this week. Uh, Fred the Red, Pirate Pete, uh, Pete the Potato, <laughs> Tough Man Turnip, uh, Fred the Red, yep. Stay Creative, it's not a human, but it's fine. Uh, who else have we got? We had uh, old Pickle Rick, obviously. Uh, who else have we drawn this week? And just loads and loads of eyes, loads of eyes. I will see you next week. Um, just for the record, if anyone missed the uh, kind of sh um, you know the social media and stuff, you can find me and my work. Please give me a shout out, like and share anything you like, uh, and also send me some images and pictures of your work to Pete Obsolete or Obsolete Formats MCR on Facebook. I am Pete Obsolete and Obsolete Formats over on Instagram. I'm obviously formats on YouTube, and I'm snob underscore Ross, snob Ross on Twitter. Please give me a shout out. Um, a lot of the different kind of art uh, ideas or projects that I'm, um, you know, working on and working with uh, are all on there. So please give us a shout. And last, but by certainly, certainly no means least, is the most wanted collab. Right? This is a collab between co uh, Most Wanted Wines and myself. That's Most Wanted logo. Just in case. Um, so there's yeah, there's a, a bag as well. It's amazing, like USB charging uh, backpack. It's got a laptop case, uh, laptop uh, sleeve in it as well. Water bottle, sweatshirts. Uh, I think there's some t-shirts coming out, and there's a little something, something coming from me and Most Wanted very, very soon. Uh, they are Most Wanted wines on Instagram. Please give us a shout. And obviously there is a competition, and you can win some of the amazing Most Wanted obsolete merch as well. Um, Please give them a shout out. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook, mostwantedwines.com. Um, there we are. Need some more water. I've got a drinking problem apparently. Excuse me. <laughs> Too excited about my water bottle. Mm, lovely. Okie dokie. So yeah, have a fantastic weekend. Again, if you find yourself being a bit... Um, I've got it in my beard, haven't I? Uh, if you find yourself being a little bit... Uh, beaten down or kind of, uh, you know, if you're getting a little bit cabin fevery, please grab a pen or pencil. You can use loads of different stuff to create art. Uh, I've just gone and found some leaves that we might be drawing in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm having ideas about what we're going to draw. And I'm also going, I'm genuinely doing this, I'm going back into my sessions and kind of copying what I've done just to kind of remind me what I've done and where we can take it next week and 
any future times. Terrible grammar. Amazing work. It's Friday. I'm being very relaxed about everything. I do apologise. Um, have a great Friday. Have a lovely weekend. I will say ciao for now. Um, I also want to say stay safe and stay creative. Uh, if anyone wants to see any of my stuff, it is houseobsolete.bigcartel.com. All the links are on my socials. Please make sure you put stay safe in the checkout. 25% off everything. All right, 25% off everything. If you want anything, please give me a shout. Some cards and t-shirts and paintings. Some of the pieces here, all that sort of good stuff, all right? Have a good weekend, stay safe. Ciao for now.